miles from Neptune and 2,721 million miles from the Earth. Is... Its speed now is 42,194 miles per hour, and we are 14 days from close encounters. With me is Dr. Brad Smith, a man who heads the Voyager imaging team. Actually, I think I'm listening to the camera mic, because this is playing right back. Doctor, I'd like to talk to you about my brownie camera. It's not... <laughs> no, you've got, uh, you've got the right one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This mic looks like it's working. Well, okay, he didn't have his microphone on, I guess. I don't have mine on yet. Neither one of them did. I'll let you do that before I make a hash of it. Well, I get paid big bucks for it. That's right. Working on that. Mics and everything. I thought this was a real sheet, uh, muslin or anything like that. They might have different mm. materials. Over. Can you both see that big man? Great, so. Oh. You're going to try to get some of these guys on camera? Soviets? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how that's going to work out yet, but uh, we are. Uh, probably around, I know that the weekend before the encounter, uh, Bruce Murray is hosting some big mm -hmm. thing, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm sort of asking him if he would drag somebody with him over here. And yeah. He has said that he'd be happy to well, try to do that. Well, I'd suggest that you... Uh, we, we have a we have a, a, a Soviet a geoscientist uh, who is uh, very experienced in geological interpretation, and uh, right after the encounter, uh, Sunday or Monday, he'll have had a chance to look at uh, the the Titan Triton pictures. <laughs> Triton pictures, and uh, you know it, it would be interesting to get get his uh, his impressions, yeah. his interpretations. His English is is quite good, has an accent, but. Oh, his English is good, sure. I think so. For the weekend after the encounter. Yeah. yeah. We were wondering what we'd do that weekend anyway. Yeah. Although you're going to be getting a ton of data in that weekend, too, aren't you? Yeah, sure. But, I mean, get, get, yeah. the, get the Soviet perspective. I think, sure. it's, uh, I think it's worth doing. I think it's great. Guys are uh, certainly uh, talented, no question. Voyager's cameras have been snapping a series of pictures today, not only of Neptune, but of its previously known moons, Triton and Nereid. In addition, 28 new pictures have been taken of the region where rings or ring arcs might be found around the planet, but so far, the ring arcs have proved to be elusive. Right now, Neptune is slightly more than 13 million miles. Neptune is slightly, right now, Voyager is slightly more than 13 million miles from Neptune. Oh, I guess that would make Oh, Neptune same thing, either way, whatever way. <laughs> Only one of them is moving in that particular angle. So you call him up and then like radio us, ask him how much time and that kind of stuff and let us know. And you know there's not much we can say about it. We have five minutes total and they will wrap us up. Yeah, there is a block, a break that we'll have to get out. Yeah. Okay. So you'll signal me or something when we start running out of time. Yeah, right, right after that first question, we'll talk about those old photos. And those will not be up very long. It's just mainly to, to, to show the difference between pictures taken early yeah. in the encounter, in the pre-encounter yeah. phase, in the observatory phase. Right. And then, yeah. Uh, hey, I that. <laughs> kind of the wrong way, though, isn't it? Are we going it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Changed our minds. We don't yeah. want to go there. Right. Back up. <laughs> Upside down. Yeah, we're still not hearing anything. I'm doing fine. Okay. 
Yeah, I can hear fine, too. No, we're doing fine. We can hear fine. We hear you fine. Audio's a little low. Here's the mic check. Mic check, please, Sam. Testing. Voyager's cameras have been snapping a series of pictures today, not only of Neptune. Me? Yeah. Voyager's cameras have been snapping a series of pictures today, not only of, my, of Neptune, but of its previously known moons, Triton and how's that? Triton and Nereid. In addition, 28 new pictures have been taken of the region where rings or ring arcs might be found. Among them, a sapphire ring, a diamond ring. Lou, Voyager's cameras have been snapping a series of pictures today, not only of Neptune, but of its two previously known moons, Triton and Nereid. In addition, 28 new pictures were taken of the region around Neptune, where rings or ring arcs might be found. So far, however, those ring arcs are proving to be elusive. Right now, Voyager is a little over 13 million miles from Neptune, and 2,721 million miles from the Earth. It is traveling at 42,194 miles per hour, and we are just 14 days from our close encounter. With me right now is Dr. Brad Smith, the man who heads up the Voyager imaging team. Dr. Smith, this is getting to be a busy time for you. The pace is picking up. Yeah, it is indeed. The, uh, being 14 days from encounter, that means that the images get about 7% better each day, and we're seeing more and more detail, and it's, uh, it's really starting to get exciting. Speaking of getting better images, we have some pictures that were taken a long way out and quite, uh, quite some time ago. The first uh, pictures that we're going to see were taken back in 1988, May 9th, uh, which uh, it looks nothing like nothing more than a Fuzzy golf ball. Yeah, just kind of a bluish ball. We were much too far away to uh, see any detail at that time. Then as uh, we got a little closer, the uh, next one was uh, coming up uh, in February of, uh, of this year. Now you can see a, a sort of whitish cloud in the middle, and that's about as well as we've ever been able to do from the Earth's surface. Actually, probably a little bit better. So this would be slightly better than, than Earth-based telescopes. And now even more recently. Yeah, that one's turned on its side, but that gives a, uh, a good view of the sort of thing that we're seeing right now. And now uh, the latest picture that we have, uh, latest color picture, was released today. It was taken the first of this month, and uh, we get a pretty good look at some of those features now, don't we? Yeah, we process this picture to, uh, to give you an idea of what you would see if you were riding along on the spacecraft. That is, you see the bluish color of Neptune, you see some uh, relatively low contrast features, including that big darkish spot with all the white clouds around it in the center of the, uh, center of the image. What are those uh, clouds doing there uh, coming off of that uh, dark spot? Well, that's a good question. I mean, we, we don't really understand the dynamics of this system yet. We're just barely getting a look that's good enough now to, to measure the winds, uh, see how they flow. And before it's over, we should have a good idea of the dynamics and, and what that association actually is. Now, here is we're going to see the black and white uh, pictures that you're seeing. These are real-time uh, pictures, and, uh, and we're seeing uh, more bands and what else? Yeah, well, if you see some little dark dots on there, those are so-called Rizzo marks that are on the television tube to help us calibrate the pictures. 
But that's an unprocessed, that's a raw image. And uh, we run that through a computer, and then a much more interesting result pops out of it. You were telling me a very fascinating story about a French colleague of yours who dropped by today and had a moment of confusion. Yeah, it turns out, curiously enough, that uh, Neptune is looking more and more like Jupiter. And we had some of the very latest images uh, up on the uh, screen showing this very, very dark spot. And uh, it looked for all the world like Jupiter. He walked in and said, oh, Jupiter. And it indeed, it's it was a Neptune. It was Neptune, Neptune. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Brad Smith, thank you very much. We'll have another live report on Voyager's increasing approach to Neptune at 10 o'clock Eastern Time this evening. And tomorrow, again live at 8 and 10 p.m. Dan Blackburn, CNN Live at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Thanks. It was. You were great, as always. Thank you, sir. Huh? Doing a good. There might be a lot more similarities. But the differences are more striking. <laughs> Thicker further in. It has no solid surface to stand on. Um, certainly it's not a place where man could live easily. There's just no oxygen, no water really uh, in those portions of the atmosphere. And no place to stand. Uranus has five large moons and ten smaller ones. One of them... Miranda appeared. This is the very latest picture of Neptune available at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And as the Voyager spacecraft races nearer and nearer the distant planet, its cameras show more and more features, especially atmospheric bands and the white clouds dashing around Neptune. This color picture, taken August 1st, was released. You can see the bright clouds moving eastward from the great dark spot near the center of the planet. The dark spot is a huge storm system. Winds on Neptune rage at 400 miles an hour. At first glance, Neptune appears very much like the last planet visited by Voyager, Uranus. They're almost identically the same size. They had very much the same coloration. And we knew that both of them had methane in their atmospheres. And so we thought that uh, there might be a lot more similarities. But the differences are more striking than the similarities. Uranus, for example, has rings, some with small moons shepherding them around the planet. Uranus has at least 11 complete rings, it also has a strong magnetic field, uniquely tilted 60 degrees from the planet's axis, sort of like having Earth's magnetic north in the vicinity of Los Angeles. Uranus is mostly gaseous, hydrogen, helium, and methane, that gets thicker further in. It has no solid surface to stand on. Um, certainly it's not a place where man could live easily. There's just no oxygen, no water really uh, in those portions of the atmosphere, and no place to stand. Uranus has five large moons and ten smaller ones. One of them, Miranda, appears to have thawed and refrozen, something scientists consider very surprising. Another aerial may have had glaciers, but not of ice as we know it. Too cold for water ice to flow, so if it, if it is a glacial type flow, it must be water that has mixtures of other types of materials in it to cause it to melt at a much lower temperature than water ice. ingredient. It has been three years since Voyager's encounter with Uranus, 
and scientists still are pouring through all the data. Now Neptune promises to provide enough new information to keep researchers busy for the next decade. Dan Blackburn, CNN at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Ammonia may be the extra ingredient. All right, we'll do one more. This is a protection copy. Ammonia may be the extra ingredient. It has been three years since Voyager's encounter with Uranus, and scientists still are pouring through all the data. Now Neptune promises to provide enough new information to keep researchers busy for the next decade. Dan Blackburn, CNN, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Okay? This is the very latest picture of Neptune available at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And as the Voyager spacecraft races nearer and nearer the distant planet, its cameras show more and more features, especially atmospheric bands and the white clouds dashing around Neptune. This color picture taken August 1st was released. You can see the bright clouds moving eastward from the great dark spot near the center of the planet. The dark spot is a huge storm system. Winds on Neptune rage at 400 miles an hour. At first glance, Neptune appears very much like the last planet visited by Voyager, Uranus. They're almost identically the same size. They had very much the same coloration. And we knew that both of them had methane in their atmospheres. And so we thought that uh, there might be a lot more similarity. But the differences are more striking than the similarities. Uranus, for example, has rings, some with small moons shepherding them around the planet. Uranus has at least 11 complete rings, it also has a strong magnetic field, uniquely tilted 60 degrees from the planet's axis, sort of like having Earth's magnetic north in the vicinity of Los Angeles. Uranus is mostly gaseous, hydrogen, helium, and methane, that gets thicker further in. It has no solid surface to stand on. Uh, certainly, it's not a place where man could live easily. There's just no oxygen, no water, really, uh, in those portions of the atmosphere, and no place to stand. Uranus has five large moons and ten smaller ones. One of them, Miranda, appears to have thawed and refrozen, something scientists consider very surprising. Another, Ariel, may have had glaciers, but not of ice as we know it. Too cold for water ice to flow, so if it, if it is a glacial-type flow, it must be water that has mixtures of other types of materials in it to cause it to melt at a much lower temperature than water ice. rings and perhaps even complete rings will be found at Neptune. If not, that would make Neptune the only planet on Voyager's tour of the outer planets of our solar system not to have rings. Given the makeup of Ariel and of Uranus, it is likely that the extra ingredient is ammonia. CNN's live coverage of Voyager's blah, blah.
CNN's live coverage of the approaching close encounter with Neptune, the most distant planet in our solar system, will continue tomorrow at 8 and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. CNN's live coverage of the upcoming... CNN's live coverage of the approaching close encounter... Quail, quail, look someplace other than board. <laughs> Danny is standing behind Bush going, sort of like Lou. Water. CNN's live coverage of the approaching close encounter with Neptune, the most distant planet in our solar system, will continue tomorrow at 8 and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. CNN's live coverage of the approaching close encounter with Neptune, the most distant planet in our solar system, will continue tomorrow at both 8 and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. File footage, I think. Okay, Yes, I am. I hear you fine. Okay, they're saying that they have a big audio problem from us. The spacecraft took 28 new pictures of the region around Neptune or ring arcs or rings. How come they're doing that rocket story out of Palmdale that we shot a week ago or two weeks ago? Oh, was it? The Voyager spacecraft took 28 new pictures of the region around Neptune where ring arcs or rings are likely to be found. So far, the pictures for the most part have come up blank. Nonetheless, Nonetheless, scientists here say privately that they do expect that partial rings and perhaps even complete rings will be found around Neptune. If not, it would make Neptune the only planet on Voyager's tour of the outer planets of our solar system not to have rings. Given the makeup of Ariel and of Uranus, it is likely that the extra ingredient is ammonia. CNN's live coverage of the CNN's live coverage of the approaching close encounter with Neptune will continue tomorrow at 8 and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. <clears throat> Thank you. One minute. Coming up. Folks coming up.
CNN's live coverage of the approaching close encounter with Neptune, the most distant planet in our solar system, will continue tomorrow at 8 and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Who is tossing it to me? Who's tossing to him? Is it Luke? Patrick. Patrick. Patrick, the Voyager spacecraft today took 28 new pictures of the region around Neptune where ring arcs or rings might be found. So far, the pictures pretty much have come up blank. Nonetheless, the scientists here say privately that they do expect at least partial rings and perhaps complete rings to be found around Neptune. If not, it would make Neptune the only outer planet in our solar system visited by Voyager not to have rings. Given the makeup of both Ariel and Uranus, it is likely that the extra added ingredient there would be ammonia. CNN's live coverage of the approaching close encounter with Neptune, the most distant planet in our solar system, will continue tomorrow at 8 and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Dan Blackburn, CNN Live at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. When a scientist here looked up at the screen showing incoming pictures from the Voyager spacecraft and saw for the first time photographic evidence of rings around Neptune. So far, all that has been seen are two ring arcs, or partial rings, both bigger than had been predicted. One is 30,000 miles long, the other 6,000 miles. But both created a great deal of excitement here. With me is Carolyn Porco, Voyager's ring specialist. Dr. Porco. 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 Puerto Rico, my heart's devotion, let it sink back in
four minutes. Okay. Keep saying it up on me. Your life runs out in four minutes. No. Or flashes before your eyes. No, it doesn't. I'm not nervous at all. Good. No, I'm not. I am. No. <laughs> well, maybe because you lose your job if you screw up. That's what happens to me. It's going to be, it's got to be before 725. Though. I think they'll come up to 710. They don't know what they want. I just talked to the guy finally. We'll find him next. He asked me what guests we could line up for him. Let's forget it. Is your guest still going to be there? No. Guest for what? Oh, there's a live shot at... Yeah. W -O -R. For WR in New York that we're doing after our regularly scheduled live shot tonight. They're a big affiliate. You can tell we're wildly enthused. I do. My whole family's in New York, except for one brother who's in, uh, in Alaska. You want to show up at 7 o'clock? Are they going to show this whole thing? We don't have to worry about it. Um, do want to come back at 7? <laughs> That's when we're doing live to New York for WOR. Can you hear I speak? Nobody has talked to me yet. I hear I hear program. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm too. No, we don't hear you. Try again. Oh, this must be my back. Okay. <laughs> I've heard no one talk to me at all. I like dedicator, right? Yep. Should I look at you when I'm mm -hmm. talking? Yeah. Okay, I know it's tough, but... Oh, stop. <laughs> got it through L.A. Uh, yeah, they may have it in the wrong way. I hear them now. A little dark. Hi, Steve. I hear you. It was early this morning when a scientist here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory looked up at the screen on which pictures are coming in from Voyager and saw for the first time photographic evidence of rings around Neptune. So far, what has been seen are two ring arcs, or partial rings both bigger than had been predicted. One is 30,000 miles long, the other 6,000 miles. And both produced a great deal of excitement here at this laboratory. Yeah. With me is Carolyn Porco, dynamic and talented. They look white as it starts catching on fire. Just... <clears throat> Go ahead, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> dynamic, char talented, charming, brilliant. And counting. <laughs> Carolyn says her whole family is watching WOR tonight. She'd be glad to come back and be our live guest. Is it for a similar show? Are similar you interview? If you want, I don't care. We could do the same thing then. <clears throat> Yeah, it'll be, at, it'll be the second question, Steve. The first question will be how excited they are. The second one, we'll look at the uh, still photo. Lou, it was early this morning when a scientist here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory looked up at the screen on which images from the Voyager spacecraft come in, and there he saw photographic evidence, genuine evidence, that there are rings around Neptune. So far, what has been seen are two ring arcs, or partial rings, both bigger than had been predicted. One is 30,000 miles long, the other 6,000 miles. And both have provided a great deal of excitement here at this laboratory. With me is Carolyn Porco, the Voyager ring specialist. Dr. Porco, there must have been a lot of smiles around your office. There certainly was. Today was a very high point in the whole Neptune encounter. It's one of those days that uh, Voyager scientists look forward to in planning the Neptune encounter. Now, we have a picture of one of the arcs that uh, was released here just a short while ago. What can you tell us about that? Well, this was the picture in which the arc was first discovered, and you can see 1989 and 4. Uh, the fourth satellite discovered, discovered by Voyager, and the arc is very close, as you can see, in orbital radius to the satellite. So there's almost certainly some 
type of dynamical association between the two, and we have yet to determine just exactly what that is. This could be sort of in, in the same order as the uh, shepherding moons that we've seen at some of the other uh, planets holding uh, rings or portions of rings in place? Well, it's of the same nature, okay, but it is probably different in detail because these are not complete rings as far as we know. And uh, the rings around Uranus, uh, which we know to be shepherded, were continuous. Now, we're seeing at the moment uh, some NASA animation that shows us, gives us some idea of where the ring arcs are in relationship to Neptune itself, uh, which would appear to be uh, about where you'd see rings, expect to see rings, right? Uh-huh, and that's uh, about where we saw them, roughly two and a half radii, Neptune radii, out from the center of the planet. Um, and we don't see as many as is being shown in this animation yet, but we suspect there are more there. Now, we mentioned a moment ago the shepherding uh, moons that uh, go around some satellites. Uranus is perhaps the uh, best example of that uh, shepherding moons in, uh, in a ring system. This is the uh, Epsilon ring, I believe. Yes, the outermost ring in the Iranian ring system is the Epsilon ring, and that picture shows t its two shepherding satellites, Cordelia on the inside shepherding its inner edge, and Ophelia on the outside shepherding its outer edge in what we consider to be a, a classical shepherding mechanism. We say shepherding, what does that really mean? What do they do there? What they really do is they gravitationally confine the, uh, the ring material so that it is literally confined to stay within a certain orbital distance from the planet. And it does so basically by gravitational kicks. You can think of it that way. Now, one thing that a lot of people probably wonder is when you see rings out there, what's in them? Well, rings are made of a multitude of, of particles. Uh, and because it's cold in the outer solar system, we believe they're made of ice particles, uh, ranging in size from dust-sized particles to house-sized boulders. Now, in the case of uh, some of them, like uh, Saturn, for example, uh, I guess this is pretty much what we'd see if we were parked out there. Well, I think Saturn's rings would look more dense. The, the number density of particles would be greater, but um, that's approximately correct in that you'd see chunks of ice. And in this case uh, of Neptune, as opposed to Saturn, uh, are we talking about chunks of water ice or ammonia or methane? Well, that has yet to be determined. Remember, this picture that was seen at 1.30 this morning is the first image we've ever seen of the Neptune system. And it's only in that kind of data that you can determine the composition of ring material, uh, not really from the ground in the stellar occultations that were observed. So um, whether or not the rings are made of uh, water or methane remains to be seen. Now, uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, pictures that I know that uh, is uh, sometimes a favorite of yours is one that's been taken from behind, which uh, tells us that uh, sometimes it's easier to see things from the back side of a planet than the front side. Yes, this is because you can position the spacecraft as is being seen now in the shadow of the planet when you're looking towards the sun. It's what we call high phase. And in this geometry, small dust particles are much more easily seen. The detectivity of small dust particles is enhanced when you look towards the sun. Dr. Carolyn Porco, thank you very much. I'm Dan Blackburn, CNN Live at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. I didn't know where to look. I'm sure my eyes were going. Uh, you did fine. Arcs was taken while Voyager still was 13 million miles away. The arc shows up only as a faint band of debris that will get brighter as the spacecraft gets closer. This new animation provided by NASA shows the location of the ring arcs now being photographed by the Voyager spacecraft. However, the two new arcs, or partial rings, are bigger than expected. One stretches for 30,000 miles, the other for 6,000 miles. Both appear to be associated with two new small moons discovered by Voyager cameras earlier this month. Some think Neptune's partial rings may be debris from other shattered moons. For researchers here, discovery of the ring arcs was very good news. For those of us who are engaged in the activity of planning the encounter and, and worrying in particular about ring, system, it, ring systems, it means that we, um, we do not have to take so much heat from our colleagues anymore <laughs> about whether or not these ring, the ring, Neptune ring arcs are really there. And it means Neptune joins the other outer planets in having a ring system. The best known rings are those surrounding Saturn, the ringed planet. Saturn's rings contain chunks of ice ranging in size from small pebbles 
to objects as big as large houses. They include the braided F-ring, held in place by two shepherding moons, and these spoke-like features, which scientists believe are caused by the presence of dust particles floating above the rings. And there is more. A set of narrow, discrete, eccentric rings embedded within the rings of Saturn that are the virtual analogs, the structural analogs of the Iranian ring system. It's as if you took the Iranian rings and distributed them within the ring system of Saturn. Uranus rings also have shepherding moons, and they gave Voyager cameras their best look after the spacecraft passed the planet and looked back at the rings and the sun. The other outer planet, Jupiter, showed a tenuous ring system with a halo effect. An extended halo of fine particles that is believed to be the result of the charging, the electrostatic charging of the tiny dust particles and then their interaction with Jupiter's tilted magnetic field. So it is very different in character from the other ring systems. There is more. Picking up in three, two, one. Uranus rings also have shepherding moons, and they gave Voyager cameras their best look after this. Sir had insisted they were confident. I hear, yes. I do. I hear an echo, but I hear you. Donna, while scientists here had insisted throughout that they were confident that rings would be found around Neptune, nonetheless, the discovery of two ring arcs did come as good news. It's always nice to have your predictions confirmed. And that confirmation came early this morning on a TV screen monitoring the images being sent back by the Voyager spacecraft.
Now we have Neptune's rings or ring arc. No more questions. Join us next week at 5, 8, and 10 p.m. Eastern Time for more live coverage of Voyager's approach to distant Neptune. I'm Dan Blackburn, CNN Live at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Unless, of course, you count the blue color of Neptune, a scientist reviewed pictures taken by the Voyager cameras over the weekend. Right now, Voyager is nine and a half million miles from Neptune, from its close encounter with the Neptune. Right now, Voyager is nine and a half million miles from its close encounter with the planet. When, this is going to be CNN's air picture, so they're going to put up a couple pictures. That's where it'll okay, be. sure. We'll try to keep it as close to the camera yeah. for you. It's yes, great. I hear you fine. What kind of a uh, clothes do we use here? Space dig out. No tees. Okay. No tees. Right. No tees for future live shots. Just Dan Blackburn at CNN. Okay. Get the order on your rundown? Stick to the order on the rundown for the pictures. So we're going to do the... Neptune narrow angle, Triton wide angle, <laughs> and then there's some Triton animation. Ah, there's a Triton animation. Oh. It's, old. it's old, so you've I seen see. it. I see. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're trying to find something to surprise you, but we couldn't find anything. <laughs> you know it all. <laughs> well, Except Neptune, that naked blue woman in yeah. Neptune. But, <laughs> but the Neptune has really cooperated, I can tell you. I mean, I think we've had more pre-encounter discoveries with this planet than I can recall having in any of our other encounters. Really? Even oh, with yeah. Jupiter? Yeah, I think so. Pre-encounter discoveries, yeah. Mm this far in advance. I mean, that partly because we knew so much less about Neptune, but, well, it's, also, but yeah. it's also, I think Neptune has just been more cooperative. I mean, the, it's, yeah, you know, the atmosphere itself is quite interesting. We found all these moons already, and uh, ring arcs. Mm -hmm. And of course, we already knew about the rings around Uranus, so those weren't really discoveries for Voyager, you see. That's true. So it's really part of Except that, for the two extra you picked. Yeah, that's right, but that didn't happen until uh, we got much closer. Not so either. in that sense, I think we've had many more discoveries uh, much earlier. Uh, with uh, on, at Neptune than at any of the other planets, and it's really kept us hopping. Yes, that's what everybody yeah. is telling yeah. me. Right, it's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> but already some people are saying, "I'm tired." <laughs> <laughs> it only happens once in a lifetime. That's true. They can live through this one. That's right. It was no Blue Monday here, unless, of course, you count the blue color of Neptune, as scientists reviewed pictures taken by the Voyager cameras over the weekend. Right now, the Voyager is nine and a, quarter, nine and a half million miles from its close encounter. What? Um, so what? Are you having a problem with the two shots? No, no, no. No, I got it. <laughs> well, I just have to know where it is, nice so I'm just practicing. I see. It's a little more headroom. See more of the spacecraft yeah. behind you. Yeah, that is a nice backdrop. Yeah. They got beautiful lights on it. Yeah. Hmm? If I want to charge it to CNN. Yeah, that's right. $100 a week. So a single to a two shot. On the first answer, a slow push to the gas. Stay there. Stay there. And there's no graphics, so I can slowly right. push it. It was no blue one day here, unless, of course, you count the blue color of Neptune. The scientists reviewed pictures taken by the Voyager cameras over the weekend. Right now, Voyager is nine and a half million miles from its close encounter with the planet, and nearly two and three quarter billion miles from Earth. The spacecraft is traveling at more than 42,000 miles an hour, and it's 10 days out from Neptune. One of the interesting things we were doing at the meeting this afternoon was all these features we see in the atmosphere. We, of course, try to predict where they're going to be basically in the next week mm -hmm. so that when we are really close to the planet, we can target the cameras right. there. Turns out that's not easy to do because these things are, are not moving uniformly. Oh, they're not? No, they're, well, they're roughly, I mean, roughly uniformly, but when you want to extrapolate, when you want to predict a week in advance, it's like predicting weather a week in advance. It's very difficult to do, to know exactly where to play aim the camera. 
to make sure we see the great dark spot up close. So that's, uh, that's part of the exercise that's going on right now. Here, it doesn't look like there are anything in the way of clouds on Triton. Uh, that's right. I think that uh, it, it, it now looks, well, we're getting more optimistic that, uh, that we'll be able to see the surface. So, uh, so let's hope. Let's hope that we're not, uh, <laughs> that when we really see Triton up, uh, you know, with, be with better resolution, that we don't find out that we're just looking at some hazy clouds. Yeah. But uh, I think it's more encouraging now. There's a little bit of contrast there, some hints that, uh, that we're seeing, uh, seeing the surface. Mm -hmm. But we ha can't really resolve anything yet, so you're always, you know, you're always a little concerned that maybe it's really <laughs> clouds. We don't, I don't think so. I hope not. Uh -huh. Ground-based data certainly suggested we should be able to see the surface. But again, that wasn't resolved data. That was oh, sure. just disk-integrated, one-point-of-light kind of data. But all of that is what makes it interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what makes it exciting. <laughs> if you knew all the answers before yeah, you got it there. It wouldn't, wouldn't be exciting at all. That's right. <laughs> It was no Blue Monday here, unless, of course, you count Mary Harden's attitude. But then you can't win them all, so... Oh, she's still in the audience. She's been that way for a week. Huh? The Blue August for the... That's what I like, the warmth engendered by the continuing relationship. They haven't arrived yet. <laughs> That's the reason I say <laughs> next week is really going to be oh. Just fine, Steve. Thank you. You got the uh, script that we put in Burkopy Voyager? It was no blue Monday here, unless, of course, you count the blue color of Neptune. The scientists reviewed pictures taken by the Voyager cameras over the weekend. Right now, Voyager is nine and a half million miles from its close encounter with the planet. Nearly two and three quarter billion miles from Earth. The spacecraft is traveling now. So we're on at uh, 35 or something? Looks like. Are we floated? No, you have a break Had to pay for it. It's on the air, you got to put on your expenses. Everything else is free, Dan. <laughs> Not everything, Mary. We're still working on some of it. <laughs> Friday from Atlanta.
theoretically. That's right. Four hours and six minutes. We're only going four billion miles. Three billion. Three billion, right. yeah, play, la not, Let's not play so fast and loose with these billions and billions here. By the time it gets through the U.S. postal system... It's the same. <laughs> it's the same, right? <laughs> Well, Bernie, this was certainly no Blue Monday here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, unless, of course, you count the blue color of Neptune, as scientists reviewed the pictures taken over the weekend by the Voyager spacecraft. Right now, Voyager is nine and a half million miles from its close encounter with the planet, or to put it another way, nearly two and three quarter billion miles from Earth. The spacecraft is traveling at more than 42,000 miles an hour, and right now, we're just 10 days away from the close encounter with that distant blue planet. With me at the moment is Dr. Edward Stone, the Voyager Project scientist. And Dr. Stone, after looking at what came in over the weekend, I gather everyone on your team is uh, pretty fired up. We're, we are certainly excited about the number of discoveries that we've already made, actually, as we're approaching your, uh, Neptune. And uh, you say you were telling me earlier that, in fact, uh, you're seeing more now than you've seen at any other planet. I think we've made more pre-encounter discoveries at Neptune than I can recall having uh, been made at uh, Jupiter, Saturn, or Uranus. Now, the pictures that uh, we're seeing most recently that we've seen on the monitors here uh, start with a close-up look at uh, Neptune itself and more and more... Uh, cloud-like features can be determined. Yes, so we're finding a, a lot of clouds, and of course one of the main uh, jobs we're doing right now is trying to accurately measure where the clouds are and then predict where they will be a week from now during our closest approach so that we can target our highest resolution, our close-up images of those uh, interesting cloud features. Now this particular image does not uh, give us a real good look at the uh, famous dark spot, but you also want to get a real close look at that as you get closer in, too. Yes, we do, and we want to be able to measure the winds in it because we believe it's a large uh, hurricane-like storm system, very much like the great red spot at Jupiter. Now still, the spacecraft is quite a ways from Triton, but it shows up as more than a dot these days. Yes, so we are now uh, beginning to actually resolve Triton as a disk of light, and there are some hints now that, uh, that we may be seeing the surface. It's a little early to, to be sure, but at least there are some hints looking at this resolved image that perhaps we're seeing the surface. So this would mean that Triton, if it has an atmosphere, would have a very thin atmosphere, not much in the way of clouds. Yes, that's right. It would, and I think uh, Earth-based data had suggested that we would find that, but it's still a little early to be sure. But uh, if all goes well, you're actually hoping for no clouds. That's right, and, uh, and uh, we will fly about 40,000 kilometers or 30,000 miles, 25,000 miles just north over the North Pole of Triton. Very close approach. And in fact, as close as you've come to any uh, satellite. In this, uh, Almost as close. We actually came a bit closer to Miranda, but a sim similar distance. Dr. Edward Stone, Voyager Project scientist, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Dan Blackburn, CNN, live at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena.
for much of Voyager's tour, it has been the moon circling the various planets which have repeatedly amazed the scientists. First and perhaps most startling was the extraordinary volcanic Io at Jupiter. Absolute surprise. I don't think anyone expected that we would find a small moon which had eight... <laughs> For much of Voyager's tour, it has been the moon circling the various planets which have repeatedly amazed the scientists. First and perhaps most startling was the extraordinary volcanic Io at Jupiter. Absolute surprise. I don't think anyone expected that we would find a small moon which had eight active volcanoes on it. One of Io's volcanoes hurls out debris at the rate of 2,000 miles per hour, 50 times faster than Earth's Mount Etna. And there is more. The surface of Io is covered with a lot of sulfur and oxygen. And something like one to two tons of that material per second is stripped off by Jupiter's magnetic field as the magnetic field rotates past Io. The dust spirals down into the planet's polar region and creates Jupiter's version of the northern lights. Next to Io is Europa, which has a thin ice crust covering an ocean of water, heated by tidal effects similar to those on Io, but less violent. In fact, Europa could be a lot like Earth's polar ice caps. At distant Uranus came another surprise in the heavily corrugated form of the small moon Miranda. We still don't understand exactly where the heat came from to cause that much overturning of the surface because it's very cold out there and to get the ice to flow, you have to have it warmer than it is out there. And so, big question is, where did the heat come from? Other questions were raised by Titan, the largest moon orbiting Saturn. Titan has hydrocarbon smog, something also seen here on Earth, and, apparently, oceans. We now believe, based on calculations, that uh, ethane, which is a light hydrocarbon, is actually present in the form of oceans on the surface of Titan, having been made in the atmosphere out of the methane. Titan also appears similar to Neptune's moon. Titan also appears similar to Neptune's moon, Triton, which also appears to have a thin atmosphere and lakes of frozen nitrogen. The Voyager spacecraft will skim close to Triton's possible cloud tops in about 10 days. Dan Blackburn, CNN, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Titan also appears similar to Neptune's moon, Triton, which also appears to have a thin atmosphere and lakes of frozen nitrogen. The Voyager spacecraft will skim close to Triton's possible cloud tops in about 10 days. Dan Blackburn, CNN, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. top in three, two, one. This is the latest picture of Neptune to be released by the Voyager scientists. Cloud features are becoming more visible. But the real excitement of the moment is over this small but steadily improving picture of Neptune's moon Triton. It now seems more likely <laughs> New top in three, two, one. This is the latest picture of Neptune to be released by the Voyager scientists. Cloud features are becoming more visible. 
But the real excitement of the moment is over this small but steadily improving picture of Neptune's moon, Triton. It now seems more likely that Triton's atmosphere will prove thin enough that the Voyager cameras will be able to see the moon's surface with remarkable clarity. And whether they're upside down or not. <laughs> no such thing. Absolutely arbitrary. Which way is up? Hello. Do you hear me? Oh. Okay. Now, as I recall, at this point, where we are now, we don't see really the North Pole of Neptune because we're at a Neptune south is tilted towards us. Right. So if we were living on Neptune, we'd be in close to winter at this latitude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True, it's a matter of degree. Something like that. Tie okay, Chip? I was just saying, I thought that there had been a problem with one of the, one of the other encounters in terms of the weather. dramatically different from its sister planet Uranus, which gave off quite a bit of ultraviolet. What does it mean? The experts here don't know yet. With me is astronomer Carl Sagan. He's been looking at some of the latest pictures to come down in the last few hours from the Voyager spacecraft. Pictures that are greatly enhanced. Pictures that show a great deal more detail of Neptune's atmosphere. Show a lot more detail of Neptune's atmosphere.
Where is the bottom of your thing? Uh, on the two shot. So, so you're going to see, you're going to see this. Gotcha. Lou, we are now eight days from Voyager's close encounter with Neptune. And in one new development, the scientists here have been looking at the ultraviolet radiation from Neptune. They say that it gives off very little of that radiation, very little more, in fact, than the field of stars behind the planet. It's sort of like looking at a gray cat in a fog. This is dramatically different from the last planet encountered by Voyager, Neptune's sister planet, Uranus. As to what it all means, well, it's too soon to say yet. With me is astronomer Carl Sagan, who's been looking at some of the pictures that have come back from Voyager in the last few hours. These pictures are much clearer than any we've seen before. They reveal new details of the planet's atmosphere. And Dr. Sagan, it would appear, as we look closer and closer at these pictures, that uh, Neptune has a very cloudy upper atmosphere. Well, in fact, uh, it's entirely clouds. We don't see any solid surface. If there is a solid surface, it's so far beneath the atmosphere in clouds that we have no hope of, uh, of detecting it. So uh, the, uh, the overall color that you see is uh, due to the methane atmosphere, that uh, lovely shade of blue. And uh, what we're looking at is uh, you can see the South Pole down at the bottom. It's dark. You can see a thing we've uh, uh, tremendously cleverly called the great dark spot off to the right. And uh, higher altitude, bright white clouds uh, uh, hovering around it. And then more towards the north, you can see a, another dark, uh, dark region. Uh, among the key questions are, how is all this stuff moving around? What's higher than what? And what is it made out of? What are these clouds made out of? Very likely, the bright stuff is condensed methane, just like uh, high-altitude clouds in the Earth's atmosphere are condensed water. Uh, but the dark stuff, what is that? We're not sure. Perhaps it is complex organic molecules produced from the methane in the atmosphere by uh, charged particles uh, precipitating into the atmosphere, but that's uh, a little too early to say. Would this be similar then to what uh, we saw at Jupiter, where there again was a, a dark spot that was a dark red spot, the great red spot? It's, uh, there is an uncanny similarity between this uh, great dark spot and what we call uh, the great red spot on, on Jupiter, and uh, clearly there's a uh, general circulation pattern that is set up on these giant, rapidly rotating gas giants. That, uh, that produces that kind of circulation. The, the red spot uh, seems to be a, uh, a storm system that's hundreds, maybe even millions of years old. Well, Triton, I mean, for one thing, we are uh, tremendously ignorant about Triton at this moment. And uh, seven or eight days from now, we are going to uh, have passed from ignorance to, uh, to knowledge. Right now, uh, from the telescope, it's a point of light. Uh, we are getting uh, some hint of what's there in the early pictures, but we're going to have a fantastic laydown of uh, pictures on Triton uh, come next, uh, the, the weekend after next. Now, here is a, a small world, but it's so far from the sun, it's very cold. It has a kind of ice on its surface, at least methane ice, maybe nitrogen ice. It has an atmosphere. It has uh, energy pouring into that atmosphere, probably producing organic molecules somewhat in the same way. 
that organic molecules were produced on the primitive Earth at the time of the origin of life. That stuff must be precipitating out of the atmosphere, accumulating on the surface. If we get to see surface features, maybe we can see the accumulation of that, uh, of that material. Another thing is, 10 years ago, Triton was a lot more red than it is today. How is it that in a 10-year period, the very color and brightness, reflectivity of, uh, of a moon can change? Those are among the questions we uh, will answer shortly. Well, one thing is, uh, isn't it astonishing that uh, we can predict when it happens and where you can see it from? And that prediction can be made not just years in advance, but centuries in advance. Likewise, Voyager's trajectory happens to arrive at Neptune when Neptune is at that place in its, in its orbit. This kind of precision prediction of future events, which science is able to do, uh, exists nowhere else in, uh, in human endeavor, certainly not in uh, economics or uh, in politics. Nobody can predict like that. So uh, this is an example of what, uh, what it's like when you really understand uh, a subject. There's lots we don't understand in science, but this area called celestial mechanics is one where, uh, where uh, we understand what's happening to very high precision. So you'll, you'll look at the moon tonight uh, in which the Earth's shadow is cast on the lunar surface and uh, so the sunlight doesn't, uh, doesn't get to the moon for a short period and uh, think about how good some areas of science can actually be.
Go, Steve. Okay, I don't know how you're going to do that. Not at all. Fine, but he doesn't he doesn't deal with pictures. As I said to you before, uh, we're going to talk about the Voyager spacecraft and what it's uh, what to anticipate in terms of hazards to it around Neptune, what they're doing to it. I've just done a whole pair. No. I mean, I can't add anything to what I've said because that's really all I or anybody else knows about that picture. Norm, are you able to talk about how they got this picture today? How they were able to make it? Are you talking about uh, the new blue picture? The color photo? Uh, how they get the colors out of it? Maybe. Well, yeah, I can tell them. You know, they take pictures from different filters and combine them together in a computer and so on. Uh, you're probably better off having somebody else. I know, but Anybody unfortunately, you're the ones here. And the guys in Atlanta don't understand sometimes that what we're doing here doesn't always match what, what they're conception what about your, uh, yes. your understanding of the mechanism um, the interesting the mechanism that it uh, transmits that, that enables them to make a color art jeez I mean how would we construct them on the ground yeah no right that right? no no what about the camera itself in that regard well I mean I can tell them a little it's a bit of kind of camera if that means anything but, uh, what they want, like uh, are you poss is it possible you could talk about how to avoid image smear, keep the camera oh, steady? Sure. He can talk about that. Uh, in that case, maybe uh, what we do... Oh. Okay. Uh, you know what the exposure time was on this picture? I don't even know. No, I have no idea. Okay. It's, okay. I mean, it's probably in the seconds. At least. Probably about 15 about the, seconds. The, the blue one that yeah. was just released. Right. I would guess it was in the seconds someplace, but I, I didn't pay much attention to it. Oh yeah, okay. sure. Sure, that's no problem. The mechanism that keeps it steady enough to get an image of that clearness from that distance. Well, you know, lead into it, and Dan will talk about it. It's good advice to partner with another nice little lady. And, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Can I move this back a little? No. And, uh, <laughs> I can barely read it now. Uh, how does it keep steady enough, going at that velocity? And you might also talk about the uh, lack of resistance in such a space. But, you know, that velocity doesn't matter. In fact, Chip, I'm going to have to lean forward like this to read it, so I've got to be sure I'm off camera even now. It sounds like you want to focus on the image that we released today. Well, what's happened, what's happened is they've, they're seeing a new picture they've not seen before, and they've gotten very excited. It's pretty okay. new, and it's very nice. And, and okay. Well, we could talk about the fact that we have to take multiple pictures mm -hmm. with different filters in order to read All right, what we'll do, Steve, if you can hear me, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go to the original game plan, and when we come out, when we go to Norm Haynes, instead of talking immediately about the health of the spacecraft and how they're going to avoid collisions, we'll talk about how they got this terrific picture.
So we'll come out of the rings. I'll talk about how they, uh, the ring arcs. I'll talk about naming them and go to Norm. An air of excitement now pervades this laboratory. An air of excitement now pervades this entire laboratory as the Voyager spacecraft now is less than seven million miles from its close encounter with the planet Neptune. One of the reasons for all the, and this is one of the reasons for all of this excitement. This is the latest, a new color picture of Neptune made available here about an hour ago and clearly visible in the southern hemisphere of the planet is the great dark spot, which appears to be some sort of huge storm system. The storm system which is behaving in rather mysterious ways. Among other things, it seems to wander a bit between latitudes, not as steady as the Voyager spacecraft Norm Haynes is controlling. <laughs> and it now is clear that the smaller white clouds are higher in Neptune's atmosphere than is the great dark spot. Meanwhile, this earlier picture has become part of a mystery here. It shows the larger of what appeared to be two much sought after ring arcs or partial rings around Neptune. But CNN has learned that subsequent pictures taken by Voyager confirmed the existence only of the larger ring arc. The smaller one called by some here Noah's Ark has not been seen again and may have been a false image. All of which simply adds to the drama of this encounter with Neptune. Incidentally, they've had some fun. Why? Why? I don't believe that. <laughs> so. Well, okay, but I thought it would be a nice little touch to add. I mean, they're always saying, let's add a human touch. This is what we're trying to do, and they try to keep us from doing it, you know? An air of excitement now pervades this entire laboratory as the Voyager spacecraft is less than seven million miles from its close encounter with the planet Neptune. And this is one of the reasons for all the excitement. A new color photo of Neptune, made available here about an hour ago, clearly visible in the southern hemisphere. Remind them not for any reason to come back to me because I'm going to be leaning forward reading this stuff. I can't see it. Okay. So don't come back to me until I'm expecting. I mean, until it says in the script where I marked they can come back to me. I'll be ready then. Well, no, I mean, when we're talking about the ring arcs. Think, yeah. Don't cut to me until I say incidentally. Normally it wouldn't be a problem, but this is just too hard to see. Hey, Mary, what are you going to do for me?
Yes, I did watch broadcast news. But. Yeah. When I say your name, All right. okay. I, actually, what I'll say is, I'll say, you know, and with me. Right. I'll say, and with me is Irving T. Schmerdwell, former mad scientist. <laughs> Let's do that. We need phone service out here. <laughs> An air of excitement pervades this entire laboratory out here as the Voyager spacecraft now is less than 7 million miles from its close encounter with Neptune. And this is one of the reasons for the excitement. A new color picture. Well, figure the picture. This picture was shot on the uh, 14th and made available on the 17th. Do you know, Norm, okay. how long it takes to cr create a color picture, process it? Well, the processing is probably not the big time. It, it has to come in. They have to look at it. Uh, they have to pick out. They have, they have to see if there's anything interesting in all these images. And then they say, okay, this is the most interesting one. But if they want a color picture, they've got to find at least three of them because you have to take it through three different filters to get color the black and white camera and then they have to find a, a picture which has got interesting stuff in it for which they Let's have tell three them pictures. about that in the interview i'll say you know this isn't just like picking up a camera and taking a snapshot and you take it to a uh, fast photo place and get your color picture back you know you got it to, and you explain you take it through three different Semi crisp. I mean, say what you feel you need to say. Yeah. <laughs> yes, don't use billions and billions of words. We're going to try. I hope so. If people don't start saying rap, do we promo anything? I just, or just straight sing out. air of excitement pervades this entire laboratory now as the Voyager spacecraft is less than seven million miles from its close encounter, seven million miles of its close encounter with the planet Neptune. This is one of the reasons for the excitement, a new color photo of Neptune. Actually beyond the encounter. Thank you much.
They hadn't seen the picture yet. Not precisely tonight, among other days. The really fun part is when you're expecting to go on at a certain time and you sort of wander as it casually gets set up and suddenly pulls you on ten minutes earlier. You go, <laughs> Oh, we're doing bring arcs and all that stuff. Then I'm introducing North. Lou, an air of excitement now pervades this entire laboratory as the Voyager spacecraft, now less than seven million miles from its close encounter with the planet Neptune. And this is one of the reasons for all the excitement. A new color photo of Neptune made available here about an hour ago. Clearly visible in the southern hemisphere of the planet is the great dark spot, which appears to be some sort of huge storm system, but a storm system which is behaving in rather mysterious ways. Among other things, it seems to wander a bit between latitudes. Also, it now is clear that the smaller white clouds are higher in Neptune's atmosphere than is the great dark spot. Meanwhile, an earlier picture taken here, this picture has become part of something of a mystery. It shows the larger of what appeared to be two much sought after ring arcs or partial rings around Neptune. But CNN has learned that subsequent pictures taken by Voyager confirm the existence only of the larger ring arc. The smaller one, called by some here Noah's Ark, has not been seen again and may have been a false image, all of which simply adds to the drama of this encounter with Neptune. Incidentally, they've had some fun naming these ring arcs. The smaller one, the now missing one, is being called the Lost Ark. If it is found again, it may be well called the... Uh, Ark of the Covenant. And incidentally, the biggest Ark of them all, the one that still is there, is being called the Ark de Triomphe because it vindicated the scientists who did believe in its existence. Now, with me at the moment is Norman Haynes. He is the Voyager project manager. And he's been looking, as we all have, at that marvelous blue picture, the brand new picture that we have received here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Norm, it's not an easy picture to take. Uh, it's not like taking a picture with your uh, home camera and running down to the fast photo place to get this color that we've been seeing. No, it's certainly not. The, the camera is basically a black and white camera. So in order to get a color picture, we needed to take three pictures of the same scene through three different color filters. And then electronically, back on the Earth, we recombine those pictures into one color frame. And when, when all of this happens at the same time, the picture that is taken is not a quick snap either. It takes a while to get these images. That's correct. The, uh, the image time, the time the shutter is open, is, is up into the seconds, occasionally as long as minutes. Uh, while that's happening, the spacecraft must remain very, very stable. If the spacecraft moves back and forth even the slightest amount, it'll cause smear of those pictures. So we've had to take a lot of time and a lot of effort 
uh, with the spacecraft to make it very, very steady while we're taking these images. You've got a spacecraft that's traveling at 42, 43, 44,000 miles an hour, uh, sort of like a speeding bullet. How do you slow that down in terms of image to actually freeze the camera and not get a big smear? Well, at the current time, we're far enough away from Neptune so that uh, there's not much relative motion between the spacecraft and Neptune. That is, we're coming rather straight on to Neptune. So at that at this point in time, all we need to do is keep the spacecraft stable about its pointing directions. When we get much closer, uh, in a week we'll be at closest approach, then we'll be moving past things very rapidly and we'll essentially have to pan the whole spacecraft while the shutter is open to keep the object centered in the field of view of the camera. What's your biggest worry, uh, if you can briefly tell us, as you come up to the close encounter with Neptune, what do you want to most avoid? Well, we've got two or three environmental things that we, we were concerned about. First of all, we're coming very, very close to Neptune. So we want to stay far enough above the Neptune atmosphere to avoid it. Uh, secondly, we're coming just outside the rings, uh, the, these ring arcs you were just talking about. The, the trajectory passes just outside the outermost of those rings. And the third thing is we want to make sure that uh, the spacecraft is successful if there's a radiation belt at Neptune. Norman Haynes, Voyager Project Manager. Thank you very much for joining with us. I'm Dan Blackburn, CNN Live at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. You betcha. Yeah. Neptune's magnetic field. Until now, scientists could only speculate as to whether Neptune had a magnetic field. Now they know the answer. And that answer is yes. Neptune appears to have a magnetic field about as strong as that around our Earth or around its sister planet, Uranus. In fact, its magnetic field could be similar to that seen at Jupiter. Crew, please drop bars and give me a picture. Dr. Turow. Uh, One question. Because why is a magnetic field important? <laughs> Why? Why is a magnetic field important? Why? Why do we care whether Neptune has a magnetic field? That was my answer. <laughs> you can't use my answer. <laughs> Why is it important? Um, well, it's one piece of the puzzle. Fingerprints because I show up on the camera. Right after you've yeah. done your one obligatory magnetic field, we're going to Triton. Those, uh, okay. Those pads are going to be in uh, Monday. Jim, I sent via pouch a package to what's his name in Atlanta. Uh, uh, one of the new buttons and uh, new pins and uh, some pictures and all that stuff. Okay. Now, what about Triton? Well, I mean, this is really neat because uh, what's happening is we're seeing markings on the surface, okay? Mm -hmm. and they, uh, appear to be different as we're seeing different faces of it. So one of three things is happening. One is we're seeing clouds, we're seeing weather on this planet. Two is we're seeing surface features, which is even more exciting because we'll be able to, to actually see the, the surface of the, uh, of the planet. Or three, it's some combination of the two. For instance, maybe we're seeing patterns that are... Is that the best clouds. of all possible worlds if we're getting both? Well, it depends on who you are, whether you're a meteorologist or a geologist. <laughs> uh, meteorologists would like to see the atmosphere. And the geologists would like to see the ground we might be seeing is a combination of the two. We're actually seeing um, perhaps ground fog in low areas or clouds tied with uh, high peaks. Methane like fog, that. ammonia fog, methane fog. Methane fog, methane yeah, fog. I mean, that would be, uh, that'd be a little scary because we'd like to see the surface. I think, uh, I think everybody would be really happy if we are able to see the surface. This is a large body. It's almost as large as the moon, and it's got an atmosphere, which makes it very unusual. 
so there could have been some uh, very intriguing geological processes that have occurred over the four and a half billion years. Only Titan is similar to the satellite. Only Titan is similar, that's right. And it's got a thick enough atmosphere where you don't see the surface. Mm -hmm. It was a rather disappointing object. But a chemical uh, smog. But a chemical smog, right. Yeah, um, for the imaging uh, experiment, it was rather disappointing. For other experiments, it was a, a real gem because the people measured uh, um, the uh, temperature and pressure of the atmosphere and the constituents of it. Mm -hmm. Let me get that off your lap because it'll reflect. Okay, sure. Well, I can put this down too. Where on the back one? Oh, I got it. I was coming out of this one. Oh, Let me do, uh, oh, do you uh, see some? Hang on a sec. Joel will get it. Not all of the news from the Voyager spacecraft comes back as pictures. Today's major announcement involves something the human eye cannot see at all. Neptune's magnetic field. Until today, scientists could only speculate as to whether or not Neptune even had a magnetic field. Now they know the answer, and the answer is yes. In fact, Neptune's magnetic field appears to be about as strong as that around our Earth or around its sister outer planet, Uranus. Indeed, it also may be similar to the magnetic field seen at Jupiter. A magnetic field is a bit like a girdle of forces which circles a planet. Its presence suggests the possibility of auroras like our northern lights and other phenomena at Neptune. So far, only two planets, Mars and Venus, are known not to have magnetic fields. With me is Rich Terrell, Voyager scientist. Dr. Terrell, why is a magnetic field important? Why do we look for that at a planet like Neptune? A well, magnetic field tells you a little bit about what's going on inside the planet. In order to have a magnetic field, you have to have something which is moving uh, in the planet. For instance, in the Earth, we have uh, a liquid core, which is uh, creating a, the dynamo, which creates a magnetic field. Inside the large uh, gaseous planets, you may have uh, constituents which are uh, constituents in this very, very deep atmosphere which are moving and creating the field. So in a sense, it's telling you a little bit about what's going on. It also may tell you what's going on in the, uh, in the solid uh, core of the planet. All of these planets had a specific signature which related to its rotation rate. We'd like to find out what that intrinsic rotation rate is so we can compare the cloud motions and winds. And after that, I will say, and Dr. Terrell, even that's though we said you didn't have, that's a long, yeah, we can I'll shorten that. It. And I'll, I will then say something effective of, uh, and although we don't have pictures of the magnetic, magnetic field, we do have pictures. And the first one we have is a brand new, first ever printed picture, I think, of uh, Neptune's mysterious, fascinating, intriguing moon, backwards. Triton. Backwards, backwards moon. Retrograde moon. Do I, uh, can I wire this up? Or, uh, oh. Is that okay? That's, That's fine. High enough? Too high? <coughs> high enough. Not all of the news from the... <laughs> not all of the news from the Voyager spacecraft comes back in the form of pictures. Today's major announcement involves something the human eye cannot see at all. Neptune's magnetic field. Until now, scientists could only speculate as to whether Neptune even had a magnetic field. Now they know the answer. And it is yes. Neptune appears to have a magnetic field as strong as that around our Earth or around its sister outer planet, Uranus. It may, in fact, be similar to the magnetic field seen at Jupiter. A magnetic field... Pictures show that the Soviets are building a missile base on Here's your bonus. It's not the Soviets, it's the Klingons. Let's get it straight. Uh, roll cue to the pictures to Triton. Roll cue to Triton Will be something to the effect of uh, Dr. Terrell, although we have, we're talking about not having pictures of a magnetic field, we do indeed have new pictures of something else, Triton, something, something like that. Okay. The minute I start talking about pictures, he can go to Triton. You get that? The minute he starts talking about pictures, he can go to Triton. He's going to lead into it by saying uh, we have pictures of something new. Mm -hmm. Dr. Terrell will talk about magnetic field for one question only, and then we go to Triton. Get that? Dr. Terrell has good stuff about everything we ask. Twin girls, I understand. Twin girls? You. No, no, no. No? No, no. I have two okay, cats. Two cats. I, I was thinking, somebody said they thought you had, had two small kids. Not two, two, yet. No? Magnetism, yeah. <laughs> the first part of the question. Hmm? Magnetism is the first question. Right. It's my personal magnetism. It reaches through the camera, out beyond the field of Earth. And, and I'm going to do a couple magic tricks. The, uh, I like that. Uh, Dan says that uh, they're going to see if Voyager can pick up his magnetism from Neptune. For, uh, I guess it's 
It's animal magnetism. It's my animal magnetism, Rich says. Only if the Neptunians are female. Then we're interested. That's right. Of course, they'd have to be either awfully large or awfully small. They're awfully cold, then. Yes. <laughs> Frigid women on Neptune. Yeah, that would be a great shot. <laughs> Going over backward off of this thing. Starship Enterprise. <laughs> you both circle Uranus trying to wipe out Klingons. <laughs> no. He's <clears throat> playing softball, I think, tomorrow. Not all of the news from the Voyager spacecraft comes back in the form of pictures. Today's major announcement involves something you cannot see with the human eye at all. Neptune's magnetic field. Until now, scientists could only speculate to whether or not Neptune even had a magnetic field. Now they know the answer, and the answer is yes. In fact, Neptune seems to have a magnetic field about as strong as that around our Earth or around its sister outer planet, Uranus. And its magnetic field may also be similar to that seen at Jupiter. Who cares? What? I don't know, but it's not Bonet. <laughs> a magnetic field is a bit like a girdle of forces circling the planet. Hmm? You better than I am. You look wearing makeup. I cheated. <laughs> yeah, I need it more than you do. No, I need it. I get this 5 o'clock shadow since I shaved. Not all of the news from the Voyager spacecraft comes back in the form of pictures. Today's major announcement involves something that the human eye cannot see at all, Neptune's magnetic field. Until now, scientists could only speculate about whether or not Neptune had a magnetic field. Now they know the answer, and the answer is yes. In fact, Neptune's magnetic field appears to be about as strong as that around our Earth or around its sister outer planet, Uranus. It also may be similar to the magnetic field seen at Jupiter. A magnetic field is a bit like a girdle of forces encircling the planet. Its presence suggests the possibility of auroras like our northern lights and other phenomena at Neptune. So far, only two planets, Mars and Venus, are known not to have magnetic fields. We don't talk about Pluto because we don't know anything. That's great. Now we can relate the winds to that. That's good. So we should know, or somebody should be able to tell us fairly soon, um, if, we, if we're saying that the, what's called the scooters are going at around 400 miles an hour, mm -hmm. that would be able to tell us what that is in terms of in the inner rotation. To the real core. Real, real core. Seventeen hours and fifty-two minutes is the figure. That's the average of, is it? Uh, of what we're using. But what it really is, we'll know from the magnetic field. How things been going? Okay, you were the only disaster. <laughs> Next week. 
Next week is going to be great. It's going to be, you Next know. Next week is going to be like trying to take a sip of water with a fire hose. Yeah. Not elegant, but you get, you get wet. That we will. Live television, no matter what time you told you're going to be on, it's never right.